Hey everybody, Reef Girl here, and welcome to my channel. You might know I have a new build going on. It'll be a total system volume of roughly 600 gallons with about 300 in the basement and about 300 in the display. As soon as I knew I had the space available, I knew I wanted a basement sump. So that's what we've set up. In this video, I'll show you what we're doing for RODI storage and saltwater mixing. Along with that is a really cool thing my husband designed to show the ATO fill level. And I'll show you the testing that we did to get that huge sump balanced and running properly. Yeah, that last part was a little harder than I thought it would be. Before we get to that, I would love it if you haven't already, if you'd subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss anything that's going on with this crazy build. For this big build, we had to get a big water storage container for RODI water. This is 125 gallons of vertical water storage and check it out, it fit perfectly inside our car. It was meant to be. The water storage tank is inside and in place. There's a drain and a bulkhead at the bottom of this tank and the first thing we need to do is check and be sure it does not leak. We added enough water to cover that bulkhead, waited overnight, sure enough, no leaks. Holes were drilled to install the float valve and the connection, and also for an emergency drain, which drains straight down into the laundry sink, just in case the float valve ever fails. So then we were able to progress on to making 125 gallons of RODI water. Moving on to salt water mixing, I have these two 65 gallon containers. They'll be mounted one above the other and plumbed together. My plan is to keep 50 gallons of mixed salt water heated and circulating in each tank. Just as we did for the RODI container, we also checked these two tanks to make sure the bulkheads did not leak. There's about 30 gallons of water in here and we put paper towel underneath the bulkhead just to see whether there's any moisture because the floor already got wet. And after several hours, there's nothing. The paper towel on the top surface was dry. Both tanks were watertight. Now to make the rack. I'm very lucky that my husband really enjoys this part of the hobby. Our timing was fortunate that we were able to buy the wood for this. One week after we got all this wood that was needed for the entire project, there was none to be found anywhere. So he got to work in the garage and spent about a day and a half putting everything together. Okay, first review of, of water storage. Look, oh my God, that looks cool. We have 125 gallons of RODI water. This Sichi Ultra Zero utility pump will be in the bottom of this container and there's about a 10 foot cord on it, which is good because the cord's gonna come up and get plugged into that power bar right there, which is a switched power bar. When the time comes to pump water out, I don't have to worry about unplugging it. I just hit the switch on the power bar and it'll shut it off. The hose is gonna come out of there and it's gonna split off. And the left-hand side is gonna go to the mixing tank. The mixing tank is right here and you can see there's a bulkhead and that hose goes into it. it. Travels up across the ceiling and goes down to that connection. So the first step is going to be to open the valve to the mixing tank. So let's go. There goes the pump. Oh, there goes the water. And it's going in there. The plan here is to fill it up partially, a couple inches above where the bulkhead is, maybe up to about here, shut it off, and then we'll test this piping and make sure it operates properly. Okay, so there's the bulkhead, looks good. I'm gonna open this valve and the water should flow from the top to the bottom. And there we go. So we're ready to do a water test now. We have a garden hose and it goes all the way over here and we're going to fill the trash can and then see what happens. We 
we decided to test the water change bypass setup. We now have the water being pushed out of this container into the first 100. We wanted to see what would happen if in the worst case scenario, the water got so high that it had to escape the bulkhead. Using a garden hose to fill the system took roughly two and a half hours. In a couple of days, when I put salt water in here, I'll find out how many gallons that is. Okay, so what did we learn? Well, we learned that the strainers, the strainers on these bulkheads are too restrictive of the flow. It just can't move fast enough. So we're gonna poke some holes in the strainers so that water can flow more freely through them. We also learned that this is just a little bit too high, not even half an inch. So we're gonna cut a little bit off that pipe so that the water level doesn't get quite so high. It did emerge out of the emergency <laughs> on this side, probably because the bulkhead's you know, marginally lower than on this side, but we can fix that just by shortening that pipe trash can overflow with the bulkheads worked perfectly. This part worked perfectly. This also worked perfectly. So the next step is to bail some of the water out of there and put the pump in and see if we can get it running as a closed loop and see what that looks like. All right, the Jabo DCS 7000 is in the final chamber. So I have not yet turned on the pump. This, this is absolutely fresh and live. So this is the switch that will turn on the controller that will turn on the pump. Ready? There's a controller, it's on low. So as soon as water comes out the hose, there goes the water up the hose. It's a DC pump, there is a ramp time to it. Let's turn it up a little more. A little more, a little more. Okay, right now we're at five. We want to run this at 12 inches deep. Oh boy, almost dead on 12. So now I need to turn this pump down a little because it's going too fast. Now we'll see what happens with this down here. All right, so I turned it down as low as I can get it. Let's see if that brings it back to the range where we want it. I don't know how we dial it back from there. Yep, system's out of balance. Too much water going up, not enough coming back. And this is not draining fast enough. Now moving a strainer. We're down almost 10 inches, slowly rising. Thinking that maybe there's an airlock. Look at the way that's blowing now. So the quarter inch hole drilled on the fly into the top has improved the water flow from the shallow 50. So we finished it off with this, which will allow the air out without allowing any water out. Strainers are going back on. Let's see what happens to the water level here. And this is going down. It's gone down a quarter of an inch. So the strainers definitely make a difference. So we put the system on feed mode to let everything drain down. And it takes quite a while for it to stop running. I would say close to five minutes. The 150 is still draining into the first 100. And looking at the water level, we had it at 12 inches and it is now almost 15 and a half inches. So that is a lot of water. Doesn't leave us a lot for when the pump gets shut off that goes up to the tank. We turned everything back on again and we thought it settled nicely, but it still did not balance. The level in the final chamber would not stay at 12 inches. We had a discussion about priorities and I decided that my priority was to have strainers separating the chambers. I really didn't want anything traveling between them. To solve this problem, we had to reduce the flow from the pump. So we installed this ball valve. Once it was adjusted, the system ran perfectly. Here's a little sneak peek of my fancy new water level indicator. And yep, it is holding steady. 
Okay, so we are going to check out the ATO system. Ah, super. I'm using this trash can, 32 gallons. Look at that, it fits in there really nicely. I think we can even get it out of there if we absolutely had to. So my husband set up this pulley system where that weight is connected to a fish line that then goes down into the tank and is connected to something else that's inside the tank. And that hose you see going in is the fill hose. So when the water level goes up, the thing that's inside is buoyant and it will rise with the water level. And also this will come down. So cool. Empty is red, danger, danger. <laughs> And that's kind of the middle position where if I see the weight get to here, I should be thinking about filling it. And this is full. So let's go see how it works. Okay, so we got lots of RO water in here and we are going to fill the ATO container. The valve on the right gets opened. The pump gets turned on. And the water goes up and across into the trash can. Ooh, there's water in the hose. It's filling up. Now we watch the weight. This is a time lapse and it took about 15 minutes. If you enjoy this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Thanks for watching and stay safe, everybody.